Hey, Nathan here. Welcome back to another C++ tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to extend what we did in the last tutorial and cover strings and switch statements. Now, a switch statement is another conditional statement like we had with the if and else if and else statements, those block of code that we can use to... If something is evaluated true, it will perform this logic. Otherwise, it will perform that logic. So a switch statement is another conditional type of statement where we can evaluate a variable. In this case, we will use an integer, and then we will switch. And then if that integer equals one value, we will do this. If it equals another value, we will do that. If it equals some other value, it will be this. If it equals a value that we have not tested it with, it will be something else. Okay. First thing, at the very top where we have include IO stream, we need to add pound include, and this is for the strain concepts here, uh, angled bracket strain and then closing angle bracket. So we're going to provide a way to have strains, and we're going to just use the basic strains for this video. Okay. So what we want to do, and I also added a, couple, a few more of these, you know, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes, yottabytes. I added a few of those. Uh, there's more after that, but I didn't bother listing those. Uh, just added a few more, and then we can use the use a counter. And what we're going to do is a counter starts at zero. If it's zero, it is bytes. If it's one, it is kilobytes. Two, it is megabytes. Three, gigabytes. Four, terabytes. Five, petabytes, and so on and so on. So we need to have a counter. Int counter. I just like to name it count is equal to zero. Okay, so while we have a while loop here, we're going to add in here count plus plus. That's going to increment count by one every time it loops. So count starts at zero, then it increments every time this loops. And depending on the count, what the count is, we will represent the appropriate data type. So after that's all done, we need to see out x. And then we also need to, uh, let's not do end line, so just see out x and get rid of the two angle brackets and the end l. So it's just see out two angle brackets and x. Then in this line here, let's set up a switch statement. And we're going to switch the count variable. Now, switch statement has an opening and closing parentheses, and you pass it the variable. You know what you want to use as the expression. Now, what? How do we do the actual testing? If it's zero, we want to display bytes. If it's one, we want to display megabytes, or I'm sorry, kilobytes. If it's Two, we want to display megabytes, and so on and so on. All right, so I'm going to set up a strain here, and I'm going to name the strain a uh, byte type. Okay, so it's going to be byte type, you know, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, so on and so on. So it's a byte type. Now, in the switch statement, I'm going to, you know, it's not like the if this, else this, else this, else this. For a switch, we have case. Case, zero, colon. So when count is zero, this will happen. I'm going to set by type is equal to two double quotes, and inside the quotes, I'm going to say bytes, semicolon, break. Now, that break there, that break there is going to end the switch statement. 
and I'm going to explain what that means here. Case 1, byte type is equal to KB, kilobytes, ending quote and then semicolon. I did not put the break there, and I will later, but I'm just going to explain what this will do. Case 2, colon, byte type is equal to megabyte. Okay, so case one, we set the byte type to kilobyte. Let's say count is one, okay? It's not case zero. Count is not zero. Count is one. So it sets a byte type to kilobyte. There is no break there, so it will go to case two, and it will set it to megabyte. So even though count is one, the ending result will be megabyte because there was no break. Break will end the switch statement. Without a break, it will follow through to the next case statement until it gets the break or the end of the, you know, until it gets to here. So you, if you're looking at C++ examples, you might see something like this. where they have case zero, colon, and they have nothing in there, case one, colon, and they have nothing in there, case two, colon. Perform action, break. So this means perform action will be performed if variable is zero, one, or two. It follows through. So if if variable is zero, it will go down the list until it reaches break or the ending of the switch. So you will see a lot of examples where people use switch statements like this. It's because they want zero, one, and two to perform the same action. They don't have to, you know, they don't have to do this multiple times. You know, that's redundant code, which you don't want to do, so they only do that once at the lowest case down there. So that's what happens when you do not put in break. And I want to break after every one of these, so that's what I'll be doing. All right. So I'm going to keep, keep on filling this up, and I'll get back to you. All right, I am back, and I filled in the rest of the switch statement. So we have bytes, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte, exabyte, zettabyte, and yodabyte. But what if somebody puts in something much larger than a yodabyte? What if they put something in that is not known yet, or that your program is not aware yet? The switch statement allows us to have a default. That means that none of the other, it did not catch in any of the case statements here. The cases, you know, 0 through 8, it, it's higher than 8. Or it is negative, which it should not be negative. But in terms of discussion, default will always be, you know, what we want the default value to be. So I'm going to say byte type is equal to unknown type. And then break. Okay. Now, we have a switch statement here, and it gets us the appropriate byte type. Now we want to see out that as well. And see out byte type. And this time we want to end L. All right, so that should be it. Now if we debug this, start debugging, and we can see the result. So whatever we had in here, the double value, 1034576, it is 1010.33 kilobytes. But as you can see, 
33 KB is right up against each other. So what we can do here is C out at, right after the switch statement where we have C out. Right after C out, we can add another double double angle brackets, and then we can put a uh, double quote, space, double quote. And what that will do is it'll add a space and then a byte type. And we cannot depend on the byte type to have a space. You know, I can go in here and add a space in every one of these, but we cannot guarantee that. So it's best to, in your presentation, to you know, space, put a space between the value and the type. Instead of have the type have an extra space in there that does not need to be in there. All right, so now let's start debugging. And as you see, we have the appropriate space. All right, so let's change the double X up here to 1024. Now it should be one kilobyte. I'm going to press F5. It is 1024 bytes. Now it's 1024 bytes because I have while x is greater than 1024. Uh, 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte. So if you want to make that 1 kilobyte, just change that to greater than or equal to. Now if we press F5, it is 1 kilobyte. Alright, now I'm going to add four zeros to that, and then I'm going to press F5, and that is 9.76563 megabytes. So our counter is determining the type. You know, if it's bytes, kilobyte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte. I will just add a few more zeros on there and see what the result is. 9.31323 terabytes. So that is the switch statement. Now, let's say, let's say 1024. It should be kilobytes, right? Now I'm going to get rid of these breaks here. After kilobyte, I'm going to get rid of that break. After megabyte, I'm going to get rid of that break. After gigabyte, I'm going to get rid of that break. You know, I'm just going to get rid of all these breaks here. Every single one of them. And the result will be unknown type. One unknown type. So even though it is kilobytes, it follows through to the next case statement until it reaches a break or the ending, you know, the ending of the switch statement, the bracket there. Uh, I'm sorry, I had to move my microphone. So it wasn't exactly centered. So that means that you have to be careful when you use a switch statement here. If you want it to follow through, just be aware of it. If you do not want it to follow through, always use the break where you think you might need it. And again, you don't need the break at the default. You can leave that alone like it is. So if I say... Uh, Put a lot more zeros in front of there. Let's get it to an un... Oh, that's too much. Constant's too big. All right, so if I can actually do it as a double value, then it doesn't give me that message. All right, so that should be good. Let's see if that says... Yeah, six point whatever it's unknown it's much hard much larger than a yettabyte yodabyte now you saw i received an error message when i did this oh we have an error why is that integer constant that is an integer that is storing it in a double so you might think oh well double has a very large data set but you cannot do that because that is going to be an integer. You're going to store it in a double. So what you had to do, and what I had to do, is to actually say this is a floating point value and actually put dot and then zero. All right, so that's it for this video. We extended on last tutorial, the, the code we had last tutorial. 
so we could discuss strains and a switch statement. And then we also discussed the issue where if you have a very large number, uh, you have to be careful which type you present it as. If you provide a floating point as a much larger value that you can use, so you should use that instead of a standard integer, which you might receive a integer constant is too large. Uh, the strings we are talking about are just basic strings. Uh, we had to pound include the string library using the angle brackets, and then we can use string, and then what we want to name the, spur the string. And then we utilize that by assigning the value we want the string to have in the switch statements. And a switch statement evaluates a variable, in this case we're using count here, an integer value, and it will evaluate that by using case. And then we provide the value that if count is equal to that value, it'll perform logic after the colon. So we have case, value, and then it will evaluate the logic after the colon whenever the variable equals to that value. If none of the case, if you provide break statements, uh, after each case, like I have here, and if none of the case, you know, uh, expressions, none of the case is evaluated, the default one will be evaluated. Now, the default one will be evaluated if you do not have break statements. Break statements allows us to break out of the switch statement whenever it evaluates a certain part of the case. You know, if we have one byte is passed to us and we have no break statements, as you see here, it will go to the next case statement and it will assign it kilobytes and then megabytes and then gigabytes. It'll keep on going down the list because there are no breaks. And then it will finally say unknown type, even though it is one byte. So it is really important to be aware of when to use break and when not to use break. In some cases, you might want to have case 0, 1, and 2 perform the same logic. In that case, zero, case 0, case 1 will follow through to case 2. And then in case 2, you will break out. So we also discussed how to add multiple things into C out. You know, we have C out, two angled brackets, a empty, a space in, wrapped in double quotes, and then we have another two. We have another set of two angle brackets, and then we have a variable, a string we want to output, and then we have another uh, double quotes, and then we have a and L for end line. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next video, we will discuss functions. I hope to see you next time.